we need to move on. Das ohne. Okay, uh, please, could you? <laughs> so, good afternoon. Okay, we need first to uh, mute participants. Okay. So, good afternoon to you all and good morning to our guest, Sami Dunbar from California. I'm very happy to welcome you to our webinar with a special guest and uh, with a special topic. So are you ready to liberate genius? I hope you are. But before I give the floor to my guest, I would like to tell you some words about the Eatwinning Featured Group Entrepreneurship in Education. My name is Cornelia Lohinova and I'm a moderator of this group. I'm a teacher of hotel management and tourism business in Bratislava, Slovakia. And I'm an Eatwinning ambassador as well. Because our group has a Twitter hashtag. You can send tweets about this webinar and info that are interesting for you. And of course, you can share this in Facebook as well, in Eatwinning page. You can use chat if you want to share an idea or ask a question. But please send your message, as I told you already, to everyone. And please uh, mute your microphones to keep uh, the sound clear. And of course, you are welcome to introduce yourself in the chat. So what is entrepreneurship education? It's not only creation of entrepreneurs. It includes much more. It's about enabling young people to develop the skills they need for life and work. It's about positive attitude and equipping people with the confidence to develop a career and vocational interests. It is about initiative and making things happen. People need the mindset, skills and knowledge to generate creative ideas and the entrepreneurial initiative to turn those ideas into action. Entrepreneurial thinking should be developed in children and young people. But are teachers ready for this challenge? This is one of the main reasons for creating our group. So let's have a look at the platform now. Okay, not this one, sorry. So I hope that now, yes, now it's correct. So this is our platform, Entrepreneurship uh, in Education. And very quickly, I will go through it. Uh, we have pages like announcements, which is very important because you can see all uh, news here. Like now we have this webinar and because I have webinars usually through Adult Connect, there is a presentation how to connect. And I would like uh, to encourage you to put your email to this uh, forum because uh, then I can just keep you updated with all the news about uh, this group. And here is presentation about what uh, we have already done in this group and of course uh, what we want to do, our plans, and I want to encourage you to, to maybe just uh, write down your proposal, your ideas. What do you want to see in this group? So this is the first page. Then there is something new, a new page, Entrepreneurship Education on the School Education Gateway. As you are eating teachers, you know already this uh, website. And January was uh, devoted to entrepreneurship education. So you can find a lot of materials here in this page as well. And then we have this entrepreneurial mindset. As I told you, it's uh, important to develop mindset skills and the knowledge. So this is devoted to the mindset. Uh, what is entrepreneurial mindset? So it's about to be curious and have positive attitude, uh, self-confidence, be hardworking and passionate and creative, innovative, encouragers, think outside the box. So I have the sub pages and you can find information there as well. Maybe it would be 
Nice uh, to go. I like uh, this page, like 101 ways for teachers to be more creative. So you can go there and uh, get inspired by it. And we have some sub pages about what to do to be passionate and uh, courageous and uh, have positive attitude. We have some tips uh, how to develop positive attitude and then how to force the curiosity. So just go there and uh, get inspired. And there are activities for teachers and students as well. And again, I'd uh, like to invite you to share your activities with uh, other members of this group. Uh, there is a very nice uh, page. We had an activity, Make a Difference Day. And it's like social entrepreneurship because you have tutorial there and uh, we had lots of nice activities, how to help community and develop entrepreneurial uh, skills and mindset of children. So I really would like to thank you all of you who participate in this movement. It was really great to go through that and read all these things. Now uh, we have Resilience Corner. So there is recording of online seminar about resilience, how to develop it. And we have uh, some tips of the participants of the seminar and of this group. So just go on and put your tips how to develop resilience as well. Uh, of course, it's important to develop entrepreneurial skills. So we have uh, this page uh, devoted to this. How can schools support entrepreneurship in education? And uh, in the last webinar, I uh, introduced you very nice websites like test guides, so virtual guide to entrepreneurial learning. If you go there, you can find more than 100 just uh, tools or methods how to develop entrepreneurial skills. Uh, you can really choose whatever what uh, age level you want or subject. If you want to, to know, develop self-confidence, you can find you can see 61 results or tools how to develop it. So uh, really very useful. And I put you there some tools from that guide and maybe it would be nice. I would like to focus on these creativity cards. Uh, there are 54 cards so with hands-on activities. You can just uh, really introduce them in your classroom and uh, develop problem solving or mind mapping or whatever. And then we have skills and strength squeeze. And I, uh, I would be very happy if you just tried those tools and share your experience with them. Uh, so it's very quickly. And of course, we have forum. And there, there's section partner finding. So maybe it would be nice to go there. And if you want to have a project with this entrepreneurial spirit, just uh, try to find partner in this uh, forum. OK, that's it. So I just wanted to show you very quickly this site. And uh, we, we just created this logo like teacherpreneurs. And you can read, of course, about teacherpreneurs in uh, this platform. So now, our guest, uh, Tammy Dunbar, knows really much about passion, passion in her classroom. Because uh, I, I showed you that entrepreneurial mindset is also about passion, curiosity, creativity. So the question is, are you passionate? Aren't, but maybe I would like to ask you, are you genius? <laughs> That's a question. Uh, you can answer if you want in the chat. Are you genius? Now a few of you. <laughs> Let's answer. If you asked four years old children, they would answer yes. I asked my 17 years old student and nobody <laughs> told me yes. Why? I think that's because they heard a thousand times at home or at school that you can't, you can't do it. 
but every child in Tammy's class is a genius. How is it possible? So we will see. Now we have our guest, Tammy Dunbar from uh, the USA. And uh, she is really great teacher. She's a Microsoft uh, expert as well. She's presenter and she's also, of course, fifth grade uh, teacher in California. But I think that she will tell us more about herself. And now it's time. So Tammy, no, no, no. I need to give you first floor and change. Yes, you should be presenter now. <laughs> Are you? Uh, it says that I am, but I okay. don't see that yes. cute little sign that says, oh, wait, quick start. Yeah, mm. so you go up to the share button and then you can start oh, okay. and share. Oh. Yes, yes, your screen. So great. There <laughs> it is. Good yes. morning, so, everyone. You can see the screen and me. Is that correct? Yes, we can. Great. Well, welcome and greetings from California. We like to say we're in the real California. We are 75 miles east of San Francisco, so we are in an agricultural valley. It's a very fertile and beautiful valley. If you eat almonds and walnuts, uh, you probably get them from my valley. 85% of the world's almonds and walnuts come from my valley. I have been teaching in Manteca for 16 years, and I love teaching. I, I love it because I love to see the looks on my students' faces when they're engaged and excited. And this whole liberating genius and genius power has been a part of that. Um, I am a Microsoft Innovative Educator, Certified Educator, Master Trainer. Um, I will happily send you my resume so you can read uh, the list of all the things that I do. And you're welcome to look at my blog, which is teachergeekischeek.com. I will send that out at the end. But let's start by talking about liberating genius. And right now you're seeing just a few pictures of some of the things in my classroom that I'll be speaking about. So let's talk about how Genius Hour came about in the first place. It did not start in the classroom. Genius Hour started about in the 1960s with a company named 3M. At the 3M company, they produced adhesives, and they allowed their employees to use 20% of their time at work to work on projects that fascinated them, but that would also benefit the company. There was a gentleman there who sang in his church choir and had a difficult time keeping the papers in his hymnal. They kept falling out. Well, because of their genius time, we have post-it notes. So Genius Hour has been around in corporations and companies since then, but it wasn't until a few years ago that Angela Myers, whom you see there on the screen, thought this would be a great thing to bring into the classroom. The big picture you're seeing is uh, my Genius Hour presentation at last year's Microsoft E2 Global Conference where I won two global awards, yay. Um, but I loved being able to share this with people because when you see the light in your students' faces, you will understand that you are preparing them to be inquisitive learners, lifelong learners, and isn't that really what we want for our students? We want them to have what many people call a 21st century skill, problem-solving skills, but I like to say those skills have been necessary since the beginning of time. So when I introduce Genius Hour to my classes, this is how I generate excitement. And this is how I've done this the past two years, and I'll show you how it's changed this year in a moment. I tell my students, hey, are you tired of Mrs. Dunbar always telling you, we're going to read this book, we're going to study this math, have you ever gotten to learn about something you wanted to learn about? And what if you could? Well, of course, their first reaction is always, right, you're pulling our legs. This is not how school works. But I assure them that that is exactly how Genius Hour works. 
And then we go over the three rules for Genius Hour. Number one, their project must be approved by me. Generally, I will approve most projects. And part of this uh, is conferencing with students, so there's always that one-to-one -one communication and brainstorming with me. So it does involve a lot of time, but it's totally worth it. So number one, I have to approve the project. Number two, it must be a project that needs to be researched. Uh, it needs to solve a problem or build a skill or, or where the student researches something to the point of really learning something new. And then the big frosting on the cake is that Genius Hour projects must be shared and presented with the whole class. The important thing is to get family support right away because students are allowed to work on their genius projects outside of the home. I give them about two hours during the week to work on their projects in class, but they are more than welcome to extend it. So I let families know at back to school night, at letters home, notices on our website, and get the excitement generated by showing them some of the past projects that we've done. Another thing I do to generate excitement for Genius Hour is to model the four C's in my classroom. Those four C's are communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. So whenever I solve a problem or do something that I think the students will benefit from, I share it with them. What you're seeing here is my victory in fixing the ice maker in our refrigerator by myself without a repair person using nothing but my creativity, critical thinking, and of course the internet looking at a YouTube video. Um, but by allowing students to see that I use the four C's and by my giving them opportunities to practice the four C's, then they're a little more confident in doing it themselves. That's why I like to cultivate genius in my classroom. Most of our assignments uh, cross-curricular cultivate genius and the four C's. So students get excited. You can see that we have alternate seating in our classroom. Uh, I have several students who are ADHD, and I have found that if I provide them with alternate seating, uh, they will sit very quietly and they will do their work. So that's another way to help them cultivate their genius. And then if I have students who want to come and dress up when they present, you bet I'm going to let them because that's the kind of environment I want in my classroom. The big thing, of course, the big exciting part is when they present. And you're seeing here one of my favorite presentation stories. That's Francisco presenting. Uh, this was our first year of Genius Hour three years ago. Francisco was in speech, he had a, a slight speech impediment and so was very shy to speak in front of people. But he was very excited about learning about Albert Einstein. So his genius for his project, he wanted to see if he could recreate an experiment that Albert Einstein had done. While I thought that would be very difficult, I totally supported him in this. He did research and probably took him at least a month, but he found a very small book, I think it was on eBay, that was Albert Einstein for Kids. So we got the book for him, and he found this amazing experiment that uh, talked about the difference in the quality of light between incandescent lighting and fluorescent lighting. And so you're seeing here uh, Francisco, uh, and you can see my classroom here as well. It's set up so students are successful presenting so they don't have to have their backs to the classroom. So you can see we're using a document reader so he can show his experiment. And he's got a little flashlight there. I think that's his cell phone actually. And I, I wanted to play video but I wasn't sure it would play. But the oohs and the ahs from the students made me know that they were totally engaged. They got a lot out of it. And what Francisco got out of it is a lot of confidence. He is now an eighth grader. He is in student leadership here at my school and on the volleyball team. And I have seen him walk in the hallway with confidence. So what I really like about liberating genius is I like the fact that these students gain confidence in themselves. 
So for two years, I've run Genius Hour. Uh, what you're seeing here in the middle is a picture of a student from a special day class. Her name is Bernice. And Bernice had a passion for both astronauts and paper mache. And after she and I and her one-to-one -one aide spoke, we thought, well, let's combine them. So it took Bernice, I believe it was about two and a half months, but she did a lovely report. You can see it behind her on astronauts. But she also made that paper mache astronaut. Uh, she and her one-to-one -one aide made him, and you can see the little, uh, I guess it's the air cord, that's a vacuum cleaner hose. That was Bernice's idea. So to watch her blossom and stand in front of the class and proudly show off her work has given her a sense of confidence. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see those are actually uh, made out of rubber bands. I don't know if they're popular over in Europe, uh, or anywhere else, but here in the United States, young girls love to make bracelets out of rubber bands, kind of uh, uh, tying them together. And I had a student last year who loved them and said, I wonder, do you think I could make something else? I said, I bet you can. Would you like that to be your genius? So what you're seeing is the culmination of her project. Uh, the rainbow colored one is a cell phone case, and the white one is actually a little coin purse that actually folds over and buttons up. So Genius Hour can be anything from arts and crafts. Uh, on the left-hand side, you're seeing my student Braulio this year, who we like to have challenges on Minecraft. Uh, he's holding a little creature that I created out of styrofoam squares, and so he's trying to recreate it. Um, that's just a, a way that we practice cultivating genius in the classroom. So I thought I was doing pretty well in my classroom for the last two years, and that uh, Genius Hour was a pretty much a success. And then this past fall, Angela Myers and Mark Moran came out with a free ebook called An Interactive Guide to Liberating Genius in the Classroom. What it is is a series of 20 lessons uh, that walk you up to Genius Hour. Microsoft asked me to test drive them, and I have been blogging about them. So I'm going to show you some of the things that are involved in this and why this is so critical and so amazing to have this before introducing Genius Hour. So we put a OneNote together, as you can see, and these lessons uh, walk students through a very logical way of thinking through genius. So at the beginning, we ask students, so uh, what do you think your genius is? And so they brainstorm that on day one. And then we moved on and said, well, who do you think other the geniuses are out in the world? Who are the people you look up to? So they went out and did biographies on people that they thought had genius. And then we extended it and said, OK, um, so what is it about all these genius people that you look up to? What are the qualities that they have that make them genius? Things like perseverance and stick to -itiveness and So these lessons are. Quite frankly, they're more like character development lessons. And preparing students in this way has been incredible. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen here at the bottom in the orange, that was our biography where we were looking at people who, um, who we admired and what kind of genius they had and what caused them to have that genius. Uh, you can see the assignment there was for them to create a one-slide PowerPoint and save it as a JPEG. Uh, the picture you're seeing up here is uh, my wonderful Yadira. And we did an exercise where students had little booklets on their desks. Each booklet had a student's name in it. And of course, the name in the booklet did not match the student's desk. We played musical chairs, sort of. And when the music stopped, whatever desk they were at, they had to open it, look at the student's name, and write something positive. Uh, it was really amazing at the end after we had all the books written in and the students got to go back and I handed out their notebooks. They were so, the room was quiet. They were so overwhelmed by the positive things people said about them. Uh, so this exercise kind of worked both ways in that it helped other students uh, say positive things and, and then it helped the students on the receiving end to be absolutely overwhelmed and feel incredibly confident. And then at the bottom right-hand corner, 
you're seeing an assignment where we took a look at what are the habits of people who are genius and what do they do consistently that allows them to be genius. Then we had a conversation about, well, all of us have genius, so how do we use our genius to share and solve problems in the world? Well, we started with our school. So you can see here we're having a conversation, which is also tied into a writing proficiency, where we were talking about uh, what are the problems we have at our school and how can we use our genius to solve them? Uh, it was interesting because at first students were saying, well, we need more soccer equipment and our field is uneven, so we need it to be smooth. And I said, great, how will you solve that? And they said, well, we'll just fix it. And they said, no, you need to use your genius. You can't, and you don't have the money. Find a problem you can solve right now. So incredibly, uh, one group came up with a solution that they would um, solve the problem of bullying at lunchtime by playing music. Because the few times that we have played music at our school during lunchtime, the kids are too busy dancing and having a good time to bully each other. That's the way where students feel empowered. Our principal loved the idea, and now we have music once a week or twice a week at lunchtime. So then the students start to see the power of them reaching out and using their genius and changing things. So then uh, it, at Thanksgiving time, Thanksgiving for us is in November, and that's generally a time when we gather food for those who are hungry. And my students, when that flyer came out, said, well, how can we make this better than last year? Which was impressive to me that they wanted to uh, apply their genius to solve this. So we did a whole thing where students wrote a press release that ran in our local newspaper, and they um, put a big sign in our window. We're on a main street. And uh, the culmination of that was we doubled, more than doubled, uh, what we had gathered last year. For our, for our community. So I think we had over 23 boxes of canned goods. So suddenly the students are seeing, wow, we can actually make a difference. Uh, then these lessons take students in the bottom right hand corner, you can see uh, the website called thrively.com. It's a free website. Teacher creates accounts for all the students. They log in and take, it's about a 20 to 25 minute uh, assessment. And it's fun. There's some brain busters and some fun questions. But at the end, the students get five power words about themselves. You can see down there, uh, top strengths, verbal, assertiveness, worldly. And then there's a narrative that tells the student, here are your strengths and here's all the great things about you. And at the bottom, it gives them three ideas for future careers. Um, and then you're also seeing uh, some students doing some self-assessment, some self-reflection. We talk about the importance of silent reflection, and sometimes you can't use your genius unless you can get in a place where you can focus on it and think about it. Uh, this is what our wall looks like now. It's a very strange looking wall, I know. But you're seeing the, the post-it notes in Albert Einstein's hair are their original thoughts for what they thought their genius might be. Um, and then you're seeing the biographies all around uh, Albert Einstein. Those are the ones that students created in PowerPoint, the people that they admire and look up to. Uh, you can see the hearts. Those are uh, students thinking about who are the people that we think about when we make good decisions. When we're trying to make a decision, what do we, what do we focus on in our heart? What's important to us? Uh, the building bricks under Mr. Boney over there, uh, are the important actions that will support us in reaching our goals, uh, perseverance, uh, reaching out to others, being able to help others and letting them help us. Collaboration is a big part of Genius Hour and learning how to work with other people. So as part of a collaboration project, uh, we made Recyclebox. We used uh, all of the old materials that teachers are throwing out. We're redoing our school right now, so there are a lot of leftover things. And so you can see uh, we have eight cable groups, and each group came up with their own unique recycle box, uh, collaborating and working together. Uh, I was very excited with these. 
and been <laughs> what's kind of cool is my students have been so passionate about these genius hour lessons and it's built their character so much and they're so convinced that they have something valuable to share that they have reached out to our kinder tech buddies. Uh, there's a kindergarten teacher at my site, it's her first year, and at my site we are one-to-one. -one. Every student has a device from kindergarten to 12th grade. So uh, the kindergarten teacher was a little overwhelmed. How do I get the students to even use these devices? They're brand new students. So I volunteered my students to be tech buddies. What it's turned into, we started off going in and showing them how to carry their devices, how to open their devices, how to log in. Uh, the teacher, kindergarten teacher, put their uh, login numbers on, on the computer so that we, my students could show her students how to log in. Um, after we had gone in and probably after about six, seven weeks, my students started saying, well, can we share our genius projects with them? So now we've got uh, these marvelous uh, lessons that are being used in a kinder class. So these kindergartners are talking about what's in their heart and what they think their genius might be when they grow up. Uh, and so when my students walk into the kindergarten class, the kindergartners don't see just the big kids who are going to help them get on Starfall and play. They see mentors. They see teachers. So this has empowered my students to an amazing degree. Um, then uh, just recently, we're coming to the very end of our Liberating Genius. We just finished up. <laughs> Excuse me. And at the end, uh, the students need to go on to their Thrively report, look at their five power words, those are the words that you see under the Discover column, and then they made passion portraits. What's a passion portrait? That's when you get with a partner and you share your power words with a partner and your genius, and then the partner draws a picture of you with something that reflects your genius. And you can see some, some kids are funny, some kids are very creative, uh, the one you see down there with the video games, that student calls his technique fabulizing. Uh, it's a very unique art form. I love it. But you can see each student drew a picture, a passion portrait. <coughs> Excuse me. And then recently we had a, a tragedy. A, one of our kinder tech buddies was in a car accident and unfortunately passed away. What struck me, what touched me was that my student said, we need to help our kinder tech buddies because they're going to be really going through a, a whole, uh, the whole gamut of emotions. So in the hallway, our students put up what you see here, a place for students to uh, write their thoughts about little Diego. And then the next time we went into our kinder tech buddy class, my students wanted to create uh, passion, compassion profile pictures, which is what they call the compassion portraits. So what you're seeing here are the compassion portraits where our, our fifth graders drew a picture of their kinder tech buddy and then the kinder tech buddy drew a picture of their fifth grader and then the assignment was you have to write somewhere on there, you matter or you matter to me. And we've printed those out and given them to our kinder tech buddies. But I mean, take a look at the kids' faces. Um, th these kids have made connections. They understand the importance of reaching out and working with others. They understand that they have a power to touch other people. I have a very confident class, which makes me very proud of them. Um, recently, we did this assignment on the left, which was not part of Angela's lesson, but was a little brainstorm of my own, um, and it turned out great. What you see is a free-handed, yeah, I drew it. It's why one leg is thicker than the other, but. Um, this is the, the body of our classroom, room nine kids, that's what it says on top. And I made a puzzle so that each student had a piece and each student wrote his or her five power words and their genius. And then we put it back together and of course the heart is that they all matter. And the message is that we can't function as a society if we're all left hands. We need everybody's collective genius to problem solve and make a difference. You know, we need the architects, we need the doctors, we need the people who are great with art, we need the athletes. It takes a village. And then uh, after our kinder tech buddy passed and, and students were a little sad, 
uh, another group of mine made this uh, bulletin board that you're seeing, which is one of Angela's saying, how big is your grave? And they are asking, this is in a process right now, um, they're asking people to take the pledge to be brave and take a step forward and uh, let the world know that you are a genius and share what you've got with the world. I have been writing about this for Microsoft. Uh, it's a three-part series. Two are already out, and you can find the first one at the link below. Um, the second one is already out, and the third one should be coming out next week or the week after, um, the culmination of everything. Uh, you can also find uh, more information on teachergeekischeek.com. That's my website. And uh, yeah, oh, and uh, this image here is uh, of Kinder Tech Buddies. Uh, and in the middle, you can see we do alternative seating, and over there is Anna's genius uh, making PowerPoints. Uh, but the one on the left is my favorite, and that's little Miguel. And Miguel went to his teacher just, oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago and said, hey, um, I, how come we don't do genius projects? And she said, well, what would you do? And he said, well, how come we always use water from the sink to water plants? Why don't we um, use rainwater, collect that? and water the plants with that. So what you're seeing is little Miguel watering my plant on my desk with rainwater that he collected. So uh, Genius Hour touches everyone. It's like ripples on the pond. It goes out and it's, it's been an amazing, amazing thing for my class. Um, now my students knew that I was going to be on this webinar today. And they were very excited, and they always love to reach out. They're very excited when teachers take the time to learn about Genius Hour because they know how empowering it is and how important it is for their future. So they wanted me to let you know that you all matter. And I want you all to know that you are all geniuses, and the world absolutely needs your contribution. So I know some of you in the beginning said, oh, I'm not a genius, um, I don't have that genius, and I want to tell you, you do. Everyone has something unique that they can share with the world. Yes, of course. Great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Tammy. And uh, now, now maybe it's uh, time for your questions. So would you like to ask, uh, there was uh, one, it was not actually a question, but you just remark that in Italy they have 25 you know, students or children in a classroom. So is it possible also with such a number to do this? I have 31. Okay. <laughs> I have 31 okay. students, I could have 34, and yes, it is possible. The thing to remember is when it's genius hour and when students are collaborating, it's not a quiet classroom. Yeah. And that, that's kind of, for us in the United States, we're doing common core, which is those four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. It's not a quiet classroom, and you have to be okay with that. As it, it, you can tell the difference when students are working, there's that wonderful, pleasant hum, which is a happy sound to teachers. Um, so, no, it's absolutely possible, and it's possible with students from kindergarten through high school. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, so, any questions? Yes, it's just saying that it's very inspiring, of course. <laughs> and what subject do you teach, Tammy? That's a question. I, I'm a fifth grade teacher, so in the United States, that's self-contained, so I teach everything. Language arts, math, science, social studies, PE, computer science, art, you name it, I teach it. <laughs> uh, yes, great. So, yeah, polyglot, you know, <laughs> everything, great. I, um, I also teach at a local uh, teacher's college. I teach a technology class, and I've actually had them do genius projects. So uh, that gets them very excited just to see how that looks. Yes, yes. Okay, great. So, no more questions? 
uh, because I will go on just uh, for a few more minutes because I am going to introduce you your meta manifesto and uh, tell you how to download, how it's uh, possible to download this uh, guide or tutorial for this liberating genius. Uh, and so Tammy is going to teach now because it's morning <laughs> in California. <laughs> I am. Thank you so much for the opportunity and please, uh, my, you see my Twitter, uh, signed at my Twitter uh, handle down there. Please send me a tweet or follow me. I post a lot of what happens in my classroom on Twitter or go to my website. You're more than welcome. Reach out to me. I always say once I'm your teacher, I'm always your teacher. So I am here for you and I'm looking forward to working with you very much. You are a genius and the world needs your contribution. <laughs> yes, of course. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you next time, maybe. <laughs> oh. So, and many, many greetings to your children now, to your students from us. I will tell them. Thank you so much. Thanks Bye -bye. a lot. Bye. -bye. <laughs> okay. So now we will go on. Uh, people need to matter. Now we know it. Okay. Oh. Yes, uh, Bea, please, could you just give me my ball? Uh, maybe, yes, now I know, I have it, okay. So, people, as we know, now need to matter. They need to be noticed, valued, and honored. Significance is even more important than success. This is what Angela Myers discovered and in a June 2011 TEDx talk titled You Matter. She spoke of how these two words can change minds and change lives if we understand them and reverse them uh, in the right way. This talk was the beginning of a great universal movement. It is a call to action that invites people to make mattering a way of life. When people accept that they matter and that their actions count, lives and learning change. And the world changes, of course. So I would love now to show you your meta manifesto. And uh, it's here. So there is this choose to matter uh, manifesto very simple, very nice ideas. You are enough. You have influence. You are a genius. You have a contribution to make. You have a gift to give that others need. You are the change. Your actions define your impact. You matter. Uh, it's really very inspiring, very nice reading and uh, usually teachers just put this manifesto to their classroom uh, because uh, it's really, uh, if you explore it, you, you can find out how simple ideas are there and how simple is it to implement it in your class. But first begin with yourself. If you ask now yourself, or if I ask you now whether you are genius, I hope that I would receive yes from all of you. Uh, because you all matter. Because uh, the words just need you, just with small actions, I think. And uh, we don't need to wait for any big actions, if anything. And uh, just share smiles, share these two words in your schools and in your families, of course, and help your, help your students to explore their passions and liberate their genius. Just encourage them. And I would like to encourage you to organize uh, these genius hours in our schools and then uh, to share your experience. And I beg that uh, you will see just shining eyes of your students and passion and joy. And uh, now I will show you how to do it. You can download a free online book and inter uh, interactive guide to liberating genius and I need to find it. So if you go, I will put the link or you already had it uh, in a chat. So there is this Choose to Matter website. And 
if you click on Liberating Genius, you have this Angela Myers free ebook. But you need a Microsoft account, but it's free to you as well. So uh, this book is really amazing guide uh, uh, for you. And uh, now I want to show you just a bit. So that's it. Uh, you need the Microsoft uh, account because it will open in this OneNote online. And it consists of uh, these parts, like uh, liberating genius, accepting your genius, accelerating and acting through collective genius. And then a special part is uh, devoted to genius hour. So you already heard this explanation how to use it. But I really like all these ideas and if you know what is genius, uh, uh, what is my genius, and I will show you what I love really, is this like heart map. I like this idea so much. Uh, so it's like this, it looks like this, that you have uh, uh, these 20 days of how to implement this liberating genius in your school and uh, then about this genius hour. Lots of reading, lots of nice ideas. Uh, if you start just reading it, you will love it because I, uh, when I started, I, I just read it the whole night. I forgot to sleep even. So it's very inspiring, very nice, just implement it. And uh, I think that then it will be great for you and for your students as well. Uh, so in the end, I would like to share with you my favorite quote. I, I, I always, always have something like my favorite quote. Uh, so this time it's a quote of a great actor, Will Smith. And the quote is, the difference between depression and joy is purpose. When your life means something to somebody other than you. To live in service, not to you, but to live in service to humanity. To live in service to your family, to your com community, to the world. So I think that we are lucky because we all have purpose. It is that simple. So enjoy your work with your students. Just spread joy and don't forget that you matter. And you are important for people around you and let them know that they matter too. Uh, so thank you for your attention and uh, I just hope and I look forward to our next meeting. But uh, first I will put the link to the chat, this one. No, okay, no, this link was not the right one. Of course, there is this manifesto, but I want to put the link, sorry, to Google Forms, because if you want, uh, if you want, uh, you can receive, of course, uh, I hope that now, no, it's still not working. Okay, I, I, I want to send you certificates. Uh, so now I hope that it will work because I no still not okay I created a survey for you and I don't know what happened so I will try now okay short and URL ah no. I really don't understand what is the problem because I am not able to put you ah. Oh, now it is here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So now you have Google Forums and uh, please uh, just fill in uh, it and I will send you certificate of participants uh, for this webinar. And uh, I hope that uh, we will meet next time uh, because we will uh, talk and I will uh, invite uh, uh, teachers from uh, one of the most innovative school of the world. And uh, we will uh, uh, introduce you, guide, uh, 
like innovative guide. What can you do uh, just different in your school, how to teach a different way? So I hope that uh, you will come again next time. And I will put, of course, uh, all these links to our group, Entrepreneurship in Education, so that you can implement these ideas. So thanks a lot, and see you next time. Now you have time to go and see uh, and, and have a cup of tea or coffee or wine with your family, and don't forget to tell them that they matter. So have a nice evening, and see you next time.